So we also, as I mentioned, want to verify proper caliber function on the vehicles. But it's important to make sure that this caliber is able to, that caliber piston is able to self-retract, okay? When you step on the pedal, the piston should move out very slightly. When you release the brake pedal, the, the caliper has to be able to retract that piston slightly and release the pressure from the brake system. So go ahead and the way to do this is very simple. You can have somebody sit in the car, command them to step on the brake pedal, command them to release it. Step on it, release it. And while that occurs, you can watch to see if that piston and that inner brake pad will move in and out slightly. In fact, when they step on the brake pedal, obviously you shouldn't be able to rotate the rotor. And when they release it, you should be able to rotate it like it is now. So go ahead and step on it. Saw the piston move out slightly. Caliper, the rotor's obviously locked. Release it. And you saw the piston move back very slightly there. Step again. Release. And one more time. Step again. Release. Well, okay, so in order to actually service the rear brake system on this vehicle, it has an electric parking brake incorporated into the rear brake calipers. You have to use a scan tool to put it in what's called the brake service mode. And that basically uh, will command the pistons in the rear brake caliper and the electric parking brake motor to retract properly so that you can remove the caliper and do a complete brake system inspection on the rear brakes and also service the rear brakes if they need servicing. So we have the scan tool connected. It's all programmed up for this 2016 Honda Civic. Well, we have to choose the correct control unit first, which in this case is the ABS traction control system control unit. So we just tap on that. Once we get there, we can go to what's called adjustment on this particular scan tool. And under adjustment, you'll see brake pad maintenance mode. So once you tap on that and enter that mode, it tells you right there it's used in rear brake pad maintenance. Please select mode to carry out. So we said, okay, the key is on. Enter brake pad maintenance mode. Check the following conditions are fulfilled. Parking brake is released, it is. The engine's off. Battery is sufficiently charged. You want to execute brake pad exchange mode. Yes or okay. And if you heard that noise, if we're able to pick that up on the microphone, that's actually the parking brake motor retracting the brake pad actuator. Push the piston in and service the rear brakes, uh, which will really allow us to inspect them more thoroughly and more completely also. And then once we're done, we'll take that out of the brake pad service mode and it'll re-energize the motor and reset the adjustment for those rear brake, um, that rear emergency brake or parking brake uh, actuator. Okay, so now we want to move to the rear, do a rear disc brake inspection on this vehicle, which is very similar to what we did on the front. Um, we can use our brake pad wear gauges again to uh, verify the condition of these brake pads as, whether, as far as uh, whether they need replacement or not. And as you can see on this one, uh, the green good brake pad wear gauge will not quite fit in there. When we go to the yellow one, it fits in there. So they may not necessarily need replacing today, on this particular vehicle, but they're going to need to be replaced soon. It's not in the red range, which means no good, uh, but it's in the yellow, which means cautious, means sometime soon we're going to have to replace the brake pads on this vehicle. Now, as I mentioned earlier, on this particular vehicle, it has the electric parking brake incorporated into the rear brake caliper. So again, you have to put it in that service mode in order to service these brakes. Uh, it may not necessarily require you to do that to do an inspection on it, However, if you want to remove the caliper, as we did in the front, to get a more careful, more detailed inspection of the brake pads and the brake rotor itself, for that matter, you will have to put it into that uh, service mode in order to remove this brake caliper. I already have the bolts loosened. Uh, there's a special clip on this particular vehicle that has to be removed in order to get the brake caliper out of the way. So now you can inspect it carefully to see if there's any evidence of damage to the piston damage to the boot, you can inspect the brake hose more carefully, and you can get in here and inspect those brake, brake pads much more carefully also, okay? And in fact, we can see on this one, there is a little bit of uneven wear like we discussed before. That outer brake pad is slightly worn 
more so than the inner brake pad on this vehicle, which might perhaps indicate a brake caliper problem on the vehicle. Uh, the other thing about this, on this particular vehicle, is it's really very difficult to measure the thickness of the rotor with the brake caliper in the way. So by removing the brake caliper, uh, you have much better access to the brake rotor so that you can take your brake rotor measurements as far as thickness specification. So I am at 0.349. Again, we like to make that measurement at four or five different locations around the circumference of the rotor. 0.350 there. Okay, and I think the specification, the minimum specification for this brake rotor was 0.317. So that means it is in fact serviceable. Uh, it can be machined. It doesn't necessarily have to be replaced. If it was below the minimum thickness specification, it would require replacement of that brake pad rotor. Okay, so to finish up our complete vehicle brake inspection, we want to inspect the brake system components underneath the vehicle. Get it all the way up in the air. Uh, and this will allow you to take a closer look at the brake caliper, to look for any signs of leakage or damage, the brake hoses again, the brake lines on the vehicle also to make sure none of those are leaking or damaged. Check both sides. Again, this just sometimes allows you to get a better, closer view of some of these components, like the brake lines and hoses in the caliper. Uh, we can inspect the brake lines on the vehicle from the front all the way to the back. And then again, once we get to the back here, we can inspect our hose, our brake lines. This vehicle, as we mentioned earlier, has an electric rear parking brake. But if it had a mechanical parking brake, you'd also want to inspect those brake cables and the brake actuators on the rear of the car. So that's the complete brake system inspection on the vehicle. And as we talked about earlier, it is important to not rush, to take your time so that you make sure you don't overlook anything and you're doing a complete thorough brake system inspection. Under the hood, all four wheels, disc brakes, drum brakes if it has rear brakes, brake lines, brake hoses, parking brake cables and actuators if it has a mechanical parking brake system.